Hello, this is Mrs. Hansen, and I'm glad you're listening to this video, and my goal is to make sure that you're not just plugging in numbers, but that you're really understanding the concepts behind all, all this math work. All right, so we are dealing with the types of acid-base problems, and on your paper, you see those four boxes. Those four boxes basically represent the variety of different problems that I'm going to give you to solve for pH of a solution. First one, 0.45 molar HCl solution. Okay, well, HCl, we all know, is one of the big six strong acids. So the one thing we know about strong acids is that they dissociate 100%. Now, regardless of what kind of reaction it is or what kind of acid or base, I want you to make sure you have a very clear in your idea in your head of what the dissociation looks like. Now, for an acid, of course, you can do it one of two ways. You can do the long version, HCl plus the water, and HCl is going to donate that H. You're going to make the hydronium, and then the conjugate base, Cl minus, is just left in that. Or you can do the shorthand. HCl simply dissociates, breaks apart into H plus and Cl minus. In both cases, we use the single arrow because this process happens 100%. So a great question is, does HCl together actually exist? HCl together does not exist because it's completely dissociated. Um, in terms of the math, very easy. But I bet there's a little step that I included that maybe you didn't. If you take that 0.45 mole per liter molar solution of HCl, for every one mole HCl, you get one mole H+. This is really important because H+, is really what makes an acid have its acid properties. So I like this step, even though it really doesn't change the math numerically. So this is actually my H+, or hydronium, interchangeable, concentration. And now you can take the pH of that. To get the pH, it's the negative log of the H+, or hydronium ion concentration. So pop in that 0.45, and you get 0.35 for the pH. A little word about sig figs. This number has two sig figs. You don't count the zero, so one, two sig figs. So therefore, the pH has two decimal places. Okay, so the number in front of the decimal never count for sig figs. All right, we'll see some other examples of that in a minute. So there's my strong acid. Bang, bam, boom, done. Uh, now we got a strong base example. It's a little bit more difficult because we're mixing two solutions. The two solutions both have strong base, okay? So both strong bases are going to dissociate 100%. All right, so in a nutshell, we write out the reactions just like we did before. I would calculate the total moles of OH minus. So the OH from this solution and the OH from this solution and add them together. You have the total moles of OH minus. Then determine the total molarity of the OH minus in this mixed solution. So your formula would be total moles of OH minus from both solutions over the total volume, which would be the 100 plus 100.2 liters. Then you can calculate the pOH, because remember, this is the concentration of OH minus. So if you take the log, negative log of OH minus, then that's going to be the pOH. Then you can calculate the pH. Okay, so here's what it looks like. This right here is the barium hydroxide solution. So you had a 0.2 molar solution times the volume, the liters cancel out. This is my moles of barium hydroxide. Oh my heavens to Betsy, this right here is an absolutely super duper 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 important step that people forget all the time. For every one mole of barium hydroxide, you're gonna get two moles, two moles of hydroxide, okay? So there's my total moles of hydroxide from the barium hydroxide. Do the same thing for the OH minus, or sorry, for the sodium hydroxide, volume times molarity, you got your moles of NaOH. For every one mole of NaOH, one mole of OH minus. So that's a little simpler. Okay, so I got these two moles of OH minus values. Add them together. Divide by the total volume, 0.3 molar OH minus. The negative log of this OH minus is 0.52. Subtract from 14 to get the pH. Uh, see all these zeros? I just want to remind you in terms of sig figs that that 14 is a totally exact, infinitely exact number. So it's really 14.000000 forever minus the 0.52. So 13.48 is the correct number of sig figs. All right. The great thing about it is this is a basic answer, meaning the pH represents a basic solution. Just make sure your answer makes sense okay, before you move on. All right. Now we get into the weak examples. So example three is a 0.45 molar H2H3O2 solution, which is acetic acid. Uh, how'd you know it was a weak acid? Hmm. Well, has that acidic hydrogen sitting out front, separate from the other H's, and it's just not one of the big six strong acids. So if it's not one of the big six strong acids, then it has to be weak. 
All right, so how weak is this weak acid? That is determined by the size of its Ka value. Uh, you guys have that pinky purple sheet. If you look up the Ka for acetic acid, it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, uh, just a warning. Some of you will have this number memorized for Ka for acetic acid before the end of the chapter. Okay. All right, so now we're going to determine the pH. Now, since this is a weak acid, we have an equilibrium situation. We're going to want to use an ice table to solve. All right, most important part of an ice table, make sure you have a really clear reaction for what's going on. Uh, here's the shorthand version. Acetic acid breaks up into H plus and acetate ion. Here's the longhand version. The H gets donated to the H2O to make the hydronium. And there's my conjugate case. I don't care which one you guys use, but you need one of them. All right, so then we fill in the ice table. My original concentration, zero, zero. This guy goes down by X. These guys go up by X. Here's my equilibrium values. All right, solve. Ka equals, and please make sure that you are labeling that as Ka. Believe me, pretty soon it's going to start getting really confusing. Is this an acid? Is this a base? Do I need Ka? Do I need Kb? So please get in the habit of labeling your K. All right, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. X squared over the concentration of the original acid. Of course, the Ka value is substantially small. So that means that that minus x, don't really care about it. Bye bye Makes the math a whole heck of a lot easier. Solve for x, comes out to 0 0.0028 molar. That represents the hydronium, or the H+. Plus. And please label that. That's so important. So I'm going to take the negative log of that. That is indeed the pH. So the pH of this weak acid solution is 2.55. That's uh, significantly less acidic than, where'd it go? The 0.35 pH of the strong acid. The strong acid produces a lot more H plus than this weak acid, okay? And that's the whole point of what we're looking at here. So, example four. Now we're looking at a weak base. So how do we know this is a weak base? Well, what jumps out to me is this nitrogen. It's got it's an organic molecule, so it's got some carbon hydrogen, but it's got this nitrogen and some hydrogen. Okay, this right here, the structure, if you drew it out, would look like this. Um, and it's it's ammonia-like. So it's got the nitrogen with the two dots. So it acts as a great base because when you add the H plus, bases accept H plus, these electrons just become the bond that holds on to that H plus. And it just is wonderful. Okay, and that would be the conjugate acid or something like that. So uh, that's how you recognize it's a weak base. All right, uh, kind of the same idea. How much the weak base dissociates is determined by the Kb value. And if you look up the Kb value for this substance, which is methylamine, 4.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's on that pink purple sheet sort of near the bottom where the Kb is at. All right, as al always, the most important part is to have a real clear idea of what this dissociation looks like. It's a weak base, so it's going to accept hydrogen, so you have to show the water is present and accept hydrogen. When you accept that H plus, what was once neutral now becomes um, a cation with a positive charge. And then what's left of the water is the OH minus. There's really no shorthand way to do it. Okay, so that's how you show a weak base dissociating. All right, uh, the ice table though looks very similar. 0.4500 0, 0, minus X plus X plus X. Uh, and then to solve, you got your KB. Did you label it? Make sure it's labeled x squared over the 0.45 minus x. Solve for x, but keep in mind that that x value represents the hydroxide. Okay, it equals the hydroxide ion concentration. So when you take the negative log of that, that's the pOH. Okay, so to get the pH, you have to subtract that from 14. 12.15. Um, a little word about sig figs. So the 0.45 going all the way over there has two sig figs. So when I solve for x, two sig figs. The zeros don't count. So when I determine the pOH, remember, the number in front of the decimal does not count for sig figs, just what's after the decimal. So two sig figs means two decimal places. Okay? So that's how we ended up with 12.15, not just like 12.2 or something like that. All right, so those are the four basic types, and acidic, <laughs> uh, types of questions you're going to see. Uh, I think I'm going to stop the video right there because... Um, you want help on the rest of them, you can tune into the next video that follows. Thank you for listening. Bye.